Guys, welcome back. Mac Rollins, Zen Cop here. Thank you for listening and thank you for being here. I wanted to first apologize for the audio issues I had yesterday with Brady from Books Behind the Badge. One thing that either engages me or completely turns me off uh, in regards to podcasts is the audio. And long story very short, my mic was on, but the recording um, was not connected and my computer was recording. So that's why I sounded like I was on a Zoom call and Brady sounded like he was actually on a podcast. Anyway, sorry about that. And I will definitely be having Brady on again someday in the future. Great guy and some great takeaways from that conversation. I really enjoyed talking to him. Something that I have been thinking about for a while and kind of kicking around um, randomly would be podcasts based on current events or topics that may carry, may carry immediate speaking points. I enjoy creating my podcast content uh, and that stuff can range from, you know, current to, to past events and so forth. But I feel as though there is definitely a need to address certain issues or events when the iron is hot. So you guys may see some episodes that I'm going to be calling sidebar episodes. They may pop up from time to time randomly. And the objective is simply to get the information out there as fast as possible. And over the years, I have seen many events unfold and then an egregious amount of quote unquote experts on both sides of the media telling the American people a wide variety of false information or sometimes completely unrelated information that then becomes the uninformed person's perspective and ultimately their viewpoint because they saw it on TV. This does introduce the fact and the uh, possibility that I myself could be spreading false information. And that is why I want to be abundantly clear. I will never be of the mindset that conversation and differences of opinion to include scenarios where someone is in fact completely wrong will ever, um, you know, sort of cloud my ability to listen and more importantly, not become frustrated with someone uh, just because of their point of view. Quite frankly, if more people made an effort to communicate that way, I feel like we would have a much better understanding of how to address certain topics that involve emotions and more importantly, fear. That being said, let's dive into it. Gun violence in America. Now, I know I've talked about this a few times, but bear with me. This is going to be a very good episode uh, because it's going to hit certain key points that I feel like we are not addressing together. And this seems to be a topic that comes up frequently and as of late, more frequently than ever before. Now, most of you who have been listening to me for a while have heard me speak or write on the topic of mass shootings. And one of the things that I stress more than anything is that the absolute worst time to talk about the gun violence problem in America is when it is currently happening or in the very close aftermath of. And I can appreciate the counter argument of that being the perfect time to talk about it because yes, it does carry with it the attention of the masses and there is widespread coverage of an ongoing issue. However, certain people are only willing to care about how to stop gun violence within the first 72 hours of it happening and not care about it uh, enough to try and stop it during the other 372 days of the year, then quite frankly, I don't think any of those people truly care all that much. Uh, if you are truly passionate about changing something, especially something as serious as murder, then you need to be invested in that cause outside of popularity and convenience. Changing your profile picture on Facebook and posting enough is enough is not going to help change anything. I especially can't stand it when we do things in repetition over and over again, expecting a different result every time, essentially the definition of insanity. In that regard, I am tired of watching this country go insane trying to solve the gun violence issue. So first things first, what is a mass shooter? There are so many definitions today, too many actually, that are floating around and making it almost uh, you know, impossible to label something properly. Every shooting we have as of late seems like it's being labeled as a mass shooting. The feds define it as an individual actively engaged in killing or attempting to kill people in a populated area. Pretty vague, but it makes sense and is probably one of the more accurate definitions that does circulate around body count, much like the K Street uh, shooting in Sacramento in 2022, where 12 people were shot, six were killed outside of a nightclub in Sacramento. The media reported that shooting 
as the worst mass shooting in Sacramento's history. Uh, in reality, that shooting was anything but a mass shooting. It was a rival gang shooting who uh, had a few individuals start shooting at each other with guns that were illegally obtained by people who were not legally allowed to own guns, who ultimately decided to play Wheel of Fortune outside the nightclub with innocent bystanders as their backdrops. All of the shooters involved were career criminals with lengthy criminal histories and also um, validated Crip and Blood gang members out of Sacramento. Quite literally gang violence in every aspect of the entire incident. Yet within hours of the shooting, Governor Newsom called for stricter gun laws and tweeted, and I quote, we cannot let gun violence become the new normal. End quote. The funny part was every gun used in that shooting was stolen or otherwise illegally acquired by people who were prevented by law to possess them. Additionally, one of the guns used in the shooting was a fully automatic Glock handgun, which is completely and totally illegal to own in California. So what gun laws would have prevented this shooting? My answer is none. What would have prevented this shooting is the shooters themselves still being incarcerated for their previous offenses, coupled with a criminal element being so scared of going back to prison that they do not reoffend. But thank you, AB 109. It's done great things for the state. Now, even President Biden, uh, after the shooting, publicly spoke on the Incident the following day saying that the United States Congress needed to work on new gun control measures. He proposed a requirement of checking people's background for gun purchases and a ban of privately made firearms, assault weapons, and high capacity magazines. The best part of all is all of those laws were currently in effect in California the night of the shooting and none of them prevented any of it. So going back to the definition of a mass shooting. After all that we know now about the K Street shooting, we have learned that no, it was not a mass shooting. It was not a targeted incident where one individual was dead set on taking life, whether discriminately or indiscriminately, but it was a uh, kind of a mess of just gangbanger pieces of shit who wanted to kill each other. That's it. But to the people who didn't know or didn't dig deeper. That incident was just another mass shooting that gets lumped in with all of the other actual mass shootings. And on that note, consider how many times we hear the words mass shooter and me being someone who actually does look further or I'm privy to certain information because of my job. I can assure you that almost 80% of the reported mass shootings are literally incidents involving inner city gang violence with almost all of them being committed with handguns, not rifles. Another skewed statistic that we will come back to later. And for purposes of study, I'm a numbers guy and statistics are in fact a very honest and reliable way to utilize um, certain tools when it comes to identifying a problem. If we wanted to solve the gun violence issue in America, we need to see uh, the quantifiable data because it's not as simple as one scenario, one gun, and one outcome. It's all different kinds of scenarios with all different kinds of outcomes. So naturally, when it comes to the numbers, what is our goal? Well, in terms of gun violence, there are all kinds of different ways to die. And in theory, we would want to see what the largest problem on the board was and then try to attack it with a game plan so we can reduce that number by a large margin, right? Now, there's a really neat website that is completely vetted and accurate, and that is the Gun Violence Archive. So gun violence essentially breaks down into two categories of death, and those two categories are homicide and suicide. Yes, suicide via firearm is a statistic that is counted in the annual report by the FBI, as well as a variety of other entities to include the CDC as a gun-related death. Now, in 2022, there were 44,405 firearm-related deaths within the U.S. The total number of homicides for the year 2022 accounted for 20,315 people. For those of you good at math, you're already thinking, no way, that's impossible. Well, it is possible because that number would mean that 24,090 people died via suicide in the year 2022. That's well over half, 60% and change. Now, pretend that we don't know that information, and what if I told you that we could reduce gun-related deaths in America by half? Many would assume that it would be about an AR-15 and high-capacity magazines and so forth, but no, it would be about suicide, which is almost exclusively committed with handguns. It would have so much to do with mental health and almost nothing to do with guns. I mean, really, let that number sink in. 60% of gun-related deaths in this country 
are suicides, not murders, not accidental shootings, not self-defense, not crimes of passion, nothing even remotely close to negligence or intent, just someone who was done with their life that uh, they chose to ultimately end it. Now, if you've been listening or reading um, to some of the things that I've talked about in the past over the years, suicide is a constant topic that I speak on for a reason, and that reason is the 60%. Now, to stay on track here, let's reference years prior because I don't want the year 2022 to appear unique because it is not. The highest year to date for uh, the death toll overall for gun-related deaths was the year 2021, where the total was 45,140. But more disturbing than anything was that in all of my research, I couldn't find one year within the last few decades where suicides were less than homicides. Suicides dominated the numbers and uh, were always more than half. I would say based on the information at hand, we have a very serious mental health crisis within this country rather than a gun violence crisis. And I will defend that argument with the fact that every single active shooter in American history suffered from or was prescribed medication, had a long history of, or family was aware that they suffered from some type of mental health disorder. A sane or otherwise mentally stable active shooter simply does not exist. Now, because I know it's going to come up as a speaking point for some people and a stance of argument, regardless of us literally just discussing the larger issue we face in the war against gun violence, I will entertain the argument of the gun itself. Now, let's first establish some vetting on myself just for the listener and for those who don't know me personally. This is not a flex or anything like that. I just want people to know that I do possess more knowledge than the average person when it comes to the topic of firearms. And that knowledge is paired with the fact that guns have been a part of my life for well over three decades. They were a part of my childhood, which included hunting and other things like trap and skeet shooting from a very young age. I've been a student of not only firearms, but also ammunition components, state and federal laws and the like for most of my adult life. And as an adult, uh, I've trained in a variety of environments and through a host of different instructors, both work-related and personal. I'm currently a range master for my agency, and I've shot a variety of guns and in a variety of places, so much so that I've testified as a firearms expert in the court many times. Um, I also have a background in firearm sales and distribution, which was my job prior to entering law enforcement. So in short, yeah, guns are a very familiar topic to me and a topic that I enjoy teaching about to others. So that being said, let's talk guns. Now, let's just put them on front street, the poor guy, the AR-15. The AR-15 started making uh, notoriety in the early 2000s when it was used in a variety of mass shootings that garnered national headlines, and they were just really horrible. The AR-15 itself became a target for Democrats. Sorry, guys, I hate to make it political, but it is. And groups like everytown.org started this movement to essentially vilify the AR-15 as a weapon of choice for all mass shooters. Oddly enough, from the year 1980 to the year 2023, long guns, including shotguns, accounted for just about 20% of the active shooter's weapon of choice, while 80% were committed with handguns. Now, going back to the importance of numbers, I would say that once again, maybe we need to rethink our focus point, but I digress. Now, the term weapon of war gets tossed around quite a bit. And they aren't wrong when they say that. That was, after all, the meaning and intent behind its creation. And we could say the exact same thing about a variety of other guns in circulation today. Now, the AR-15 style rifle is essentially any semi-automatic rifle that is based on the Colt AR-15 design. The Colt variant removed the select fire feature, select fire meaning fully automatic capable, of its predecessor, the original Armalite AR-15. And for those of you who don't know, that's what the AR stands for, Armalite Rifle, not Assault Rifle. It's basically a scaled down version of the AR-10 design by Eugene Stoner. And in 1959, Armalite would sell the patent to Colt's manufacturing company after the US military rejected their design in favor of the M14 
which is what replaced the M1 Garand. Now, the M14, however, would ultimately be replaced by the M16, which most people think came before the AR-15, but after most of the patents for the Colt AR-15 expired in 1977, many firearm uh, manufacturers began to produce copies of their rifle and under various names, hence where we are today with a slew of companies producing a variety of variants to the private and public market for AR-15s. Now, all that being said, do AR-15s truly account for a large part of the active shooter events that we see here in America? And the answer is no, they do not. Very few, actually. They are, however, seen in scenarios where the active shooter incident gains national attention and very quickly, typically when, involve, when it involves a school or some other public place where the chaos and fear factor enter into that scenario and very quickly. Now, I'm not going to tell you that the AR-15 is not void of being associated to active shooters. They are, and there's proof to back up that argument. What is not true, however, is that the AR-15 is this dominating force behind the active shooter movement. It is either the weapon of choice by design, i.e. the shooter chose it based on their own personal experience and familiarity. A good example would be the most recent active shooter in Maine. And then the others who quite literally, uh, quite literally purchased it because that is what their predecessors used before them. And that is a very important uh, speaking point because I don't think the psychology of these events gets the attention that it deserves. The AR-15 became a staple for mass shooters after it was deemed the most cynical and dangerous pieces of metal and plastic west of the Mississippi. East, technically, because Colt is based out of Connecticut. But my point is, the Colt following behind the gun itself was in part created by those who were trying to get rid of it. The AK-47, for example, one of the most circulated weapons in the entire world, battle proven since its inception in 1947 with comparable capabilities, some more so than the AR-15 in terms of, excuse me, in terms of reliability with the exact same magazine capacity and actually a larger caliber ammunition. So why isn't that the weapon of choice? In my opinion, it could have been. But for whatever reason, those who paved this road of violence to where we are today elected to use something else and the pattern stuck, much like we see with serial killers who pay homage or use tactics to those who killed long before them. Now, one of the most organic school shootings in U.S. history involved a Tech 9, a couple of shotguns and a high point carbine, not exactly what we would consider to be heavy artillery, yet Eric and Dylan managed to kill 20, I'm sorry, 15 people and injured 24 others when they showed up for school that day in Columbine, Colorado in 1999. Now, I don't want to beat a dead horse or lose a certain portion of the audience because there are some of you who are listening who... Um, you know, you're saying to yourself, you know, yep, yep, yep. And co-signing every word that comes out of my mouth because you yourself have seen it, you've worked it and lived it to some degree. So the reality for you is ironclad. You totally get it. And I appreciate your support and understanding. And it's people like you and I who will continue to push for public safety and focus on the topics that are relevant and the topics that will keep us uh, safe. So the other part of the audience that I want to address are the ones who are still listening, despite the fact that they may not actually agree with everything I am saying, or maybe they're thinking a little bit differently because of what they learned today, which is ultimately my objective. This isn't a gotcha or I told you so. It's simply educating those who may not have all of the information. And with information comes understanding. And in time, hopefully we actually work together and tackle the real issue at hand. Now, regardless of anything that I talked about today, I want to make uh, one thing abundantly clear, very clear. I don't know a single person within the gun community who would prefer that gun violence in America, active shooters, mass shooters, all of it. I don't know a single one that would say, yes, gun violence is a good thing. The gun community overall is not what the media makes you believe that it is. If you watch the news, you're going, or you're always going to see a, a very skewed and limited scope of what they want you to see based on their objectives, both sides, not just one or the other. So gun people like me, good people who are going to defend the second amendment with a second amendment with every fiber of our being because of what it stands for and not the guy open carrying a desert Eagle wearing a fuck around and find out shirt with a beer gut 
and a Gatson flag that he probably couldn't even explain the origin of. And yes, no step on snake, please. But yeah, that's the guy they want you to see. They want you to see the idiots because it's all an agenda. It's an agenda that leaves us in a complete state of non movement. They want that. We hear common sense gun laws, but their entire argument and plan to create a safer America has nothing to do with common sense. In the end, we will continue to go insane as a nation doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result every single time. In that regard, I'm tired of watching us go insane. And in the interim, a lot more people are going to die if we don't address this sooner rather than later. Guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this sidebar episode. Please let me know in the comments if you liked it. You can always shoot me an email or find me on Instagram at the Zen Cop. Also, please don't forget to drop a rating if you're on Apple. Like and subscribe everywhere else. Thanks again, guys. And I'll see you back here on Sunday. Have a safe week. And of course, have a very happy Halloween. And don't forget to check your kids' candy for any AR-15. Sorry, I had to. See you guys next week. Be safe. And we'll, uh, I don't know, I'm out of words. Have a safe week. Try it again. Safe week. Have a great week. See you guys Sunday.